I want to tell you about an interesting experiment I did that maybe you can try at home, and it goes like this. Have you ever have you gotten in a debate with somebody where it's sort of like whack-a-mole, and they'll, they'll make a claim, and then you'll debunk it? And it, once you debunk their claim, and let's, let's say there's a, a link, and it's just, it's just clearly debunked, what does the person you're arguing with do when you have thoroughly debunked their best point about a topic? Do they change their mind? No, never. What they do is they go to their second point. If you can debunk that, they'll go to their third point, and if you can debunk that, their fourth, etc. Eventually, they'll run out of points. Once you have debunked all of somebody's points, let's say there are five good points of whatever their opinion is, and you debunk all five, what do they do? And I'm wondering if you've noticed. Do they change their mind? Because they had five points and you debunked them in order. They do not. They start over on the top. <laughs> they, they start at the top of the list as if you hadn't ever talked about it. And it was only like five minutes ago. And they just go back to the top and you go, what's going on here? I, I just debunked that. So I did an experiment the other day, and I'm not going to give you any details of it. I'm just going to describe it in a general way. I, I was in that situation where I was going through the five and then they were just repeating. And I said, I'm going to try an experiment. And the experiment goes like this. I'm going to write down what I say about the first item on the list, and it's going to be on this piece of paper. I'm going to show you what I wrote down. I'm going to make you repeat it out loud so that you know what I wrote down. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to make you forget what's on this piece of paper. Just one sentence. Just one sentence on the topic. I'm going to make you forget this within two minutes. And I fold it up and I put it down. And then I go through the list. I go, debunk this, debunk this, debunk this. And then, of course, they looped around to the top of the list. And I said, wait, why are you talking about this first point? Because it's already been debunked. And the person I'm talking to looked at me as though they didn't know what I was talking about. And then I took the piece of paper and I said, remember two minutes ago, I said I was going to make you forget what's on this piece of paper. And I held up the piece of paper and the person looked at it like they'd never seen it before. And I said, watch this. I'm going to do it again. Read this, read this piece of paper, and I'm going to make you forget it within two minutes. Put it down, took them back through the five reasons, the same as last time. All five reasons were debunked. Person came back to the top one, reiterated the top reason, and I said, did you see what happened? Do you remember that I just told you I was going to make the, you forget what's on this piece of paper, and I could do it repeatedly? I can do it as many times as we go through the cycle. And I said, what's on the piece of paper? And the person couldn't tell me. And keep in mind that what was on the paper, piece of paper was very simple. It wasn't the type of thing you can't remember for two minutes. And then I said, watch me do it a third time. I went through it a third time and then I said, what's on the piece of paper? And the person couldn't remember. And then I did it a fourth time, four times. They couldn't remember when they got to the top of the list what was on the paper. Now, I have imagined that I could reproduce this test before. I've imagined it, but I never actually did it. And you have to do it with an actual piece of paper, because if you do it with words, I've tried it with words and it doesn't work. And, I'll, and the way you do it with words is you'll say, we just talked about this and I already, um, and I already debunked it. And the person will say, no, you didn't. We didn't talk about this, and you didn't debunk it. So you say, okay, well, let me do it now. Now you remember it, right? So you don't have to say this again, because now we've agreed that that's debunked. We can talk about your next point. You can get people to say yes, but when they circle back to that first point, they will swear to you that you never had that conversation. And it will be as if it's fresh, and it was they were beginning the conversation anew. So if you don't write it down, and you don't show it to them, and you don't make them read it out loud, and you don't call it out and say, I'm going to make you forget this in two minutes. Pull it up, put it aside, and then take it out in two minutes and say, look, I made you forget that just like I said. Try it at home. It's amazing. You know, you'll, I think you'll know when you reach this situation. Now, as a trained hypnotist, it's not surprising to me 
It, it, ha- it played out exactly the way I imagined it would play out. To you, it will be mind-boggling. Like, you won't believe what you're seeing right in front of you. Uh, and, of course, it only works if you really can debunk somebody's points. If you can't debunk them, then maybe the other person's just right. Who trained you? Well, I'm a trained hypnotist. I took a hypnosis class when I was in my 20s. It was a course on how to, how to learn to be a hypnotist. Um, you know what? I'll bet I can do this live. You know, I'll, I'll think about doing this. I'm going to be taking more... Um, I'm going to be taking more uh, call-ins. There's there's a uh, a feature that needs to be fixed on this uh, guest feature within Periscope. Uh, so if I invite guests in when I'm in that mode, and you have to be in that mode before you start the Periscope. So if you start the Periscope with guests being invited, you can't also tweet it to Twitter, so people don't know that the Periscope's happening. So that, you know, I only get half as much traffic when I, when I invite guests. So as soon as that's handled, then I'll invite more guests. Yeah, I could definitely do this live. So the way I do it live is I would say, here's my debunking. I'm going to write it right here and, and I'll keep it here right, right behind me. And then I'll say, I'm going to make you forget this while people are watching. I'll write it on the board and I'll say, watch, I'm going to make you forget this one sentence here ever happened. And then I'll do it right in front of you. It'll be amazing. You won't even believe it. I swear to God, you will, you will think that I'm working with somebody that I know or something. You will completely not believe that I'm really doing it. Um, so we, di- we discussed small a already at the start. Schedule it so we know the day or time. I, I'm not that well organized. Um, can you give a concrete example? What topic? Yes. Let's say um, let's say uh, Russia collusion. So somebody says. Uh, so somebody says, it's obvious that the president was colluding with Russia. So you say, what would be your evidence? And they will say, well, Manafort did something, or you know, one of these other players did something. And you'll say, would you agree that they are not the president? They'll say, well, yes. And then you go to point number two. But Russia, their trolls were interfering with the election. Well, do you agree that there's no evidence tying that to the president? Well, yes, I do. But there's more evidence. So you can go right through the list. And when you're done and you've debunked all of them as not relevant to the central point, the claim that president himself was colluding, when you get to the point, they will start back up with Manafort. <laughs> and, and you will once again say, um, but Manafort was doing his own thing. And this does not have any any connection to the president that has been demonstrated. So that would be that would be one. So you could write that on the board. I could write, Paul Manafort did his own thing, not related to the president. I just write it down, take them through the arguments, and at the end they'll come back to Manafort, and you'll say, well, you forgot it. You forgot that one. Um, do you think people that do this are stupid? No. That's the interesting part. Your, your, uh, your reflex when I talk about this is to assume that I'm talking about dumb people, right? I mean, that's the normal thing. You think, wow, these people are so dumb. They can't remember what you said a minute ago. They, you know, uh, it, it, unfortunately, intelligence is completely unrelated to what I'm talking about. And in fact, you could argue that intelligent people are more likely to experience cognitive dissonance because they get a little more, uh, let's say, a little more invested in their own opinion. So it's harder for them to imagine that they could be wrong. If you're dumb and somebody corrects you, you probably say to yourself, well, I'm dumb, I probably got that wrong, I'll just change my mind. I think dumb people are far more likely to just say, yeah, 
I've been dumb ten times this morning already, so the odds of me being dumb on this are, well, pretty good. I'll just change my opinion. Smart people are more likely to argue um, from cognitive dissonance. In my, that's in my experience, I will not claim that as a scientific truth. 